Good morning. Ronan Gary, good morning to you. Hi, Adrian. Good how, Shane. You, morning. how are you morning. keeping? Good. Good, yeah. yeah Life is good. good. Yeah. Life is good. Seems good week. A bit of a jumpy line. Are we okay? I can hear you there. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah. Uh, short week. Short week. Played on Sunday. So uh, we have Monday, Tuesday off. Trained Wednesday, Thursday. We're what? Friday morning. Now we have today off. We'll do a small bit tomorrow morning, play at nine o'clock local time tomorrow night in the velodrome in Marseille. So uh, exciting times uh, this time of year. The, Beating on both fronts, so um, that's where we want to be. The line is a bit ropey, actually, but we'll we'll bear with it and we'll uh, we'll work through it. What um, <clears throat> those you mentioned a couple of days off, so I'm sure the players obviously you've you've mentioned that you'd a few drinks or you'd a bite to eat after the game on uh, Sunday night. Uh, I'm sure from the players' point of view, there's a bit of. Um, oh, we've lost him, have we? I think he just, yeah. he just yeah, fixed yeah, it up we'll there. Get him, yeah. uh, we'll get him back. We'll get him I back also want to know where Rogers got that white Adidas retro uh, hoodie he's wearing, the zipper. zipper. Nice. Fantastic bit of gear. He'd be an Adidas man, of course. Of course, of course, yeah. Never forget. Um, Colm is still with us. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> there he is. Ah, there he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at this. Stayed, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well. Um, had we any good? We had plenty of comments Loads coming. Of good ones, yeah. Loads that you I, play with. I don't know yeah. if we have your mic up, do we? Uh, Ronan's back, is he? Ronan. Yeah, yeah, that's You're much there. better. Sorry. Right. It was a bit fuzzy. That's all right. The Gremlins are in the system. I was going to ask you just about the um, break that you gave the players that you mentioned for a couple of days, and I'm sure that they'd take that as a break and they'd check out and they do whatever they're doing. From your point of view, is it? Business as usual, almost in terms of your planning, or can you afford yourself a little bit of downtime? Ah, there we go. The old the, colour bars, the old never, multicoloured uh, screen. There, <clears throat> they're never a great sign, are they? Oh. Um, Shifty lad says, "Colm, you're actually wrong about the corner, and Adrian is a hundred percent right. Oh. The outer circumference of the ball just needs to be perpendicular to the white line." Here's what I learned growing up, right? You won't like this. I'm going to warn you. They, well, I'm also assuming this is going to be nothing, no relevance to the comment. You won't like this at all. What I was told Shane? growing up, right? You should never tell anyone they're wrong. Well, I'm just reading out Shifty Lad's comments. So I'm you... saying the Shifty Lad. Yeah. Uh, because if you say to someone you're wrong, right? Yeah. You immediately get their backs up. It's antagonistic. Oh. Sure, I'm not going to agree. Whatever, whatever <clears> you say after that, I'm not going to agree with you. But, but for, you could say. So, so moving yourself past that because you're I don't think you're right there. To know, uh, I don't think, I don't right think, there. I don't think you're right there. Oh, but, that's but, Shifty Lad one for you. But I like his confidence. He's, he knows that he's. Um, I have no problem with the overall comment. That's a more positive. So you're saying that you are actually mistaken. Oh, if, if, if it can be proven to me that I was mistaken. No <laughs> if I yeah. An aerial angle of the <laughs> corner flag. I, I like, our audience anyway. do get a good insight into the inner workings of your mind. It was, uh, we could piece together great, a whole pile of clips that I think... Great bit of advice that I got. <laughs> I tell you, it's, I'm telling you, it gets you far. Like, mm. Don't be telling anyone they're wrong. I, uh, I like that. The bit of positivity. It's uh, all about our language, isn't it? The use of all language. about the use of language. Yeah, and tone yeah. is very important too. But also, yeah. why but would look, he dance around what he just... He knows that's the... Well, I say he's one of my favourite commenters, if yeah. you so I've no problem saying it to it. Uh, John Claffey says I was told to speed up during my driver's test. Ah, here. You have to Not make a great sign, is it? Did you both pass first time? No, I failed. I did mine when I was like. You didn't fail. You just fa You just uh, didn't. What's a positive? More positive. I way did. Of just didn't that? pass. <laughs> you didn't pass. Yeah, yeah. You could say that uh, if it's factually yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. No, it's factually no. correct that I failed. I first had, time just. I think. I think. Or a couple of times. Whatever the whatever the lower age, lowest age to do your driving test is 17, sixteen. Seventeen and a half. <clears throat> is it 17 and a half? Yeah, you get your theory at 16 and then 17 you can get your oh, It was different. When I did it, you did everything in one day. There was no theory test and driver's yes. test separately. It was all you do it all in one day and like I failed it. Yourself. And I, when I was, I, I, I have a feeling I was 16 and when I was 16, I looked about 10 and uh, somebody had said to me afterwards that you had failed before, you, before the driving test began. You walked in the door there, yeah. yeah. I, I, I passed first time at 17. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to say. I, uh, you haven't even done your test yet. I did it, by Did you? July 2008. All right. The well, test centre is. The the te do you not remember when you? Uh, don't you have to try to be cool here? Like you can be yourself. Cool you can be yourself. You, you can the uh, the driving test centre. Mm. It's not even a driving test centre anymore. It's defunct, right? The test, including the theory <laughs> test, right? <laughs> Friday Start, facts. Hold on. Started at four pm <clears> and, <throat> and yeah. it finished at four nineteen. It was amazing. We, we Nine minutes. We just went for nineteen. Oh, 19 yeah. minutes. We went Sorry. for. We went for <laughs> We went Quick for a little spin. Or I went for a little spin, and the hill start is a joke. Like, yeah. it was a joke. Like, you didn't, you, you didn't even you didn't need the handbrake. It was, bar it, wasn't a hill. it was barely ah. a hill. Ah, lads, it was ridiculous. The, miles the three point turn yeah, as yes. well. Or sorry, reversing around the corner. You never do that again. 
No, when have you ever? Ah, no, but it's a bit like most of the stuff you learn in school. You're like, ah, yeah, I'm algebra. Use that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ronan, you're back with us. Yeah, I am. We're uh, we're on the phone line, so we're 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 going to hold up here. I'm sure. Um, yeah, I was just asking about the cup break that the players had, and whether you had an opportunity over those couple of days to unwind as well, or was it kind of business as usual? Um. No, it was a short week, you know, Monday morning comes on quickly, back into the school run and uh, other duties, you know, so it was um, Monday, Tuesday, well, Tuesday getting the review of the Exeter game and looking at the opportunities that we took and the opportunities we left behind, so then Wednesday, Thursday were two kind of uh, busy days and then we're already on Friday morning. Yeah, it comes around quickly. Um, it's an unbelievable achievement, and congratulations, by the way. It's uh, what you're doing there. We, we had talked to you the last time you we were on, talking, saying that we're, you're no longer an underdog. But I mean, uh, it just gets hammered home. And I rewatched the game during the week. The um, uh, the way that you outmuscled them, uh, superior scrum, the skills, the game plan. It was such a comprehensive victory. It was never really in doubt. Did, is that your feeling of it? Uh, yeah, you know? it was. Yeah, it was. I think it was. It was um, a combined performance for probably maybe 55 minutes. You know, I think we started quite slowly, but then we scored 40 points unanswered in the semi-finals. is powerful. We have powerful players, and uh, I think people saw what um, happens when you combine, I suppose, aggressive backs with fast backs with an accurate kicking game with forwards that... Um, are big and are powerful and are strong. Mm. The the accurate kicking game, like it was really noticeable. The sort of kick passes early and then <laughs> kick passes often as well. And there weren't always those kind of long raking crossfield kicks. Sometimes there were short, deft touches. Um, and it sounded like from your comments after the game that that's not always part of the game plan. Uh, but it seems like your ten can play it whatever way he sees fit in front of him. Um. Yeah, but Adrian, it has to be part of every game plan, you know. That's, I think, the difference now in, in good players becoming great players is their capacity to go to the draw and pull out attacking kicks. You know, you can look how easily you can reward forwards by scoring with that capacity to see space, pull the trigger, kick it, hit it. So, something we try and make players aware of but it's the same policy you have to keep knocking them over the head over the head over the head and eventually hopefully it funnels through into their uh, I suppose um, menu of plays I suppose another credit running to, to yourself and the coaching team is the ability to, to adapt in game and that's certainly something you noticed uh, against Exeter as well whether it's personnel changes or positional changes um, and Will Skelton kind of made the point I think in advance of the Exeter match as well he was uh, praising yourself and, and the difference between the team last year and this year and he was saying you know totally different group this year to last year different personalities but Will was very complimentary of the way in which you've managed to adapt and take the team on a little bit further Now well, you have to you you know you know evolve or you die or get better or get beaten is the Crusaders language you know and Andrew Goodman will have plenty of that for feeding into the Leinster camp in a few weeks' time. It makes it exciting coaching against coaches that you really respect, coaching against an environment that you um, really admire. So this is where you want to be. This is uh, everything that 10 months leads into to get to final of the Champions Cup. So um, the boys are excited. Um, to go back to Hastoy, Aaron, and it, like an incredible get, and I know there was competition to get him at the time when you did. Like he's still only twenty five. Uh, not has he has he a couple of French caps, but maybe not a huge amount. Yeah, but, he does. Yeah, I yeah. think maybe two is it. Maybe Could a couple. Yeah, and doesn't yeah, doesn't doesn't overly seem to be in consideration, which is remarkable given the way you watch him uh, play game uh, play the game last weekend. Yeah, and he only get better, Adrian. In fact, that. He spent his whole career in Poe with their fight relegation. Mm. So it's a different mindset. He's, I suppose, a disciple of that environment. Now he's coming into a club that are performing well, but that wouldn't have the history of a Toulouse or a Toulon, for example. But um, he he wants to get there, and you really will get there. It's just, uh, you know, I can understand that if when it's coming in as a number 10 with a lot of powerful personalities in the forwards 
and with a Jonathan Dante, you feel sometimes reluctant to take ownership of the team, but that's a big step for him to make it his team. And um, you're never dependent on one guy, obviously, uh, because we've a smashing young um, on French under twenties out uh, of Hugo East, uh, who has come on and done well. So there's always challengers looking to take the role of a number ten in any club. But uh, Antoine has done very well. Um, but when you, I suppose, break down his his attributes, it's easy to see why. We just have to keep him uh, coming. What, how would you describe him? Like, what would you, to the lay person, um, what sort of an out-half is he? Um, quite instinctive. Uh, fast. Um, aggressive. Probably in his play. Um and I'm not trying to make him structured. I'm just trying to get him to understand his reason why he does this or that in a game. Mm. There's always uh, room for the creative, instinctive player, but the thinner the air gets, the more you have to have, I think, preparation done. And he is beginning to appreciate that if he prepares well, he usually performs well. You can't rock up on a Saturday at this level and play well, which... Some people think you can. Yeah. Was there was there a bit of an instinct? Was there was that part of his makeup before arriving at La Rochelle or? Oh yeah, been, completely. Yeah. yeah. Like you watch him playing for Paul, he take on the line three out of five times. I was sent to him a month or two ago. I haven't seen you take on the line in a long time. That's your game. Play it. But uh, very respectful and maybe it never helps. I think at the initial stages when you've a uh, a ten ten relationship with your boss and the fact that obviously understand the position very well, um, and I mean the reality is they never say it, but they're under a cloud or under a big shadow when I'm their boss. But it's for me to make them feel very very comfortable, and we're getting there. I had that with Richie Moanga at the Crusaders, where for four or five months it was a very strained relationship because. Uh, he probably felt I was hard on him but I was only hard on him because I could see he was world class and I think it's the same with Antoine Another world class player and he's a man we, we mentioned on the show before Ronan is Tower of Care Barlow and I, and I think you had pointed out before that you, you probably rated him just behind DuPont maybe as uh, best number nine in the world um, and again outstanding last weekend a couple of tries including yeah, finishing I off that team I say that obviously T doesn't play uh, test rugby you know and there's a lot of incredibly good nines but uh, I just admire his preparation I admire his mentality and I admire his humbleness His game management is, is ridiculous as well he just seems like he can he can control the, the pace of the game almost Yeah he's very invested in everything we do he's a very very good person a very deep person a very kind person and uh, that reflects in how he plays he puts everyone before him and then yeah, you know I mean he can play at top speed as a nine, as a an attacker, and then he's like an extra back row for us in defence. The atmosphere at that match, Ronan. Um, I, I haven't been to a La Rochelle game just yet. It's on the list, but the, the the atmosphere looked ridiculous. I think you mentioned afterwards it's not normal at all, and and I think you compared it to, you know, I suppose in your playing days you would have played in front of raucous Munster crowds and and in Twickenham in front of eighty thousand fans as well, but. There just seems to be something special, and I think, as you've pointed out, there's a connection between the La Rochelle fans and players at the moment that that's pretty special. Yeah, it is very special. That's yeah, huge because, um, you know, what I mean, I think we prepare all week behind closed doors, I suppose, but the energy you get then when you go to a stadium it was um, not far off. I've been. When I was in Super Rugby, we went to watch uh, when we played the Aguares in Argentina. We went to watch one of the local soccer games, and the atmosphere of a local Argentinian soccer derby it was reminiscent of that. You know, I mean, it wasn't the crowd that were sitting in their seat. It was a lot of people jumping, and forty thousand people jumping at the same time creates a great atmosphere because you can obviously um, when the game is fairly well decided you can have a let your 
mind drift and it was powerful for um for a long time and that's exactly what you want to do with there's uh very very um similar attributes between playing for Munster and Colts and La Rochelle that's for sure and, and the common element is the uh, I suppose the connection with the fans Can I just uh, bring you back to the Carbarlo, Carbarlo try that you uh, Shay mentioned there just before half time like it felt it is as if it summed up um, La Rochelle's performance on the day like the pass is stick really at ease with the unstructured, frightening pace to move from that scrum in your own 22 into the red zone the smarts of the prop to step inside like the Exeter defence that had stepped out a little bit, the offloads from Favre, the, that offload from Soutini was off the charts. Like the rugby was so good and I just watched it like with awe and wondered how much of that was a plan and how much of it is just playing what's in front of you. Yeah, that's good. It's a good... I think we have um, established something here, Adrian, where we talked previously on the show about flow, don't we? Mm. So for me, that's exactly when you flow in your game or when you have... Uh, people secure in their ability and they're playing what they see at top speed. And it all comes together, you know, and the fact that uh, the offload, obviously, from Uja Satini, everyone will focus on that. But as you say, Red Awardy's capacity not to throw a blind pass, to keep the ball, to accelerate, just to play it while it was in front of him. Um, and if you consider how that started, we probably had three men spare on the left-hand side in the scrum, but you will have it kind of was aggressive in his carry, breaking tackles, and then we played offload game. Then good decision by uh, Dylan Lates to keep the ball cleaned out, but by Will Skelton, then uh, Red Ward carries Booga one man clean out. You know, we're just um, attacking with speed, attacking space, and uh, that's why uh, rugby, when it's played like that, it's very, very simple. Yes. For that to combine, you need, I suppose, a lot of um, movements or mindsets aligning. What was the most pleasing thing for you, for you about the game from a coach's point of view? Um, I think our capacity to strike back into the game, 7-0, Exeter started well. They were aggressive. They were good at how they constructed their first try. Simmons was really difficult to stop and he got five metres from the line so they went 7-0 up we're at home and uh, there has to be a moment there when you can kind of think we can watch it okay this could be an Exeter's day but we stamped that out quite quickly and then put the foot on the accelerator and went away and went away and went further away and then put a gig, bigger gap between us and never gave them any hope really but until we had uh, obviously very disappointing switch off late in the second half I think you spoke afterwards Ronan and it was a curious one that I wanted to ask you about you were, you were talking about your, the hope for a few beers and a sing song obviously to celebrate but uh, you made the point it is to live days like today that we are in rugby I wonder has that changed from, from your from your playing days because players are, are often they're all often operational robots at times and they have to be uh, you can't really enjoy these moments when they come around but but clearly now that you're a coach you are you seem to be in a different mindset where you can actually say, you know what, these days don't come around too often. We've got to be European final and we can actually enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, I think... I'd hope to think the players are like that more than I'm like that. You know, I think it's a player's game. They get to express themselves. I've got to set the environment for them. But um, it's very, very important that they they enjoy the know, they enjoy the prep. I wouldn't have. I would have enjoyed a winning dressing room afterwards. But, uh, you mean, there's different ways to... To, to approach something that's why when you go around the world you see different strokes for different folks and different uh, ways of preparing and different cultures and different uh, fascinating mindsets at work so you know, Will Skelton Winnie Antonio prepare very differently to how I prepared I don't know which way is right is a better way to answer the question was is there uh, a wrong way for doing it but how I, I suppose, saw my approach as a player. Um, there wouldn't be a need for that nowadays. And everything is evolving. The most important thing is that uh, the players get to express themselves. Uh, do you allow yourself to get <clears throat> excited by the final? It's the dream final, like a repeat of last year, uh, Leinster, Dublin. Um, the dream final for who? I think for the for the neutrals. 
I mean, cer- <laughs> okay. certainly for, for Irish people, right? Like, you're going to have, obviously, all the Leinster supporters and then you'll have everybody else um, shouting on Larishelle and shouting on yourself. Um, there's a huge excitement about it here. Yeah, it's hard because I'm detached from that, obviously. But, yeah, come the 20th of May, it'll be an incredibly exciting day, that's for sure. Um Dream finally adds for people that have probably don't have um, something um, involved in it, but for for us, it's it's a it's a huge opportunity. It's a very exciting opportunity. It'll be uh, the biggest challenge we've ever faced. Um, but that's why you uh, get involved, isn't it? Th- those big, those big rivalries between, say, Arsenal and Manchester United back in the day, Ronan, they were always hyped up even further by by the mind games between Wenger and Ferguson. I'm not going to call them mind games, but the um, this uh, post match interview where you're describing the the slog that that La Rochelle have to go through compared to Leinster and and I guess the competitiveness of the games in the top fourteen is that. Is that a? I think Lindsay Pete described it as a, is a. It's a good way of taking pressure off the players, your own players. No, I don't think so. I just think that's what I spoke, which is I don't have anything prepared for the mind games to play Leinster. You know, I think it won't come down to that. Um, there were my views probably in the heat of battle after after uh, a semi final victory. When you sit back and you're able to analyse it, probably. People playing in the URC will see it very different to living and me playing in the top 14. So it is what it is. It, it probably has no relevance uh, for for uh, winning on the 20th. I just think that um, from our point of view, there would be no excuses. You know, we're going there to to, to try and uh, win the competition. And that's what it comes down to there be all kinds of things thrown around in the lead up to the game but um, that's um, for other people to decide you um, you had in your back pocket last year the uh, Leinster tend to uh, fall off if I remember correctly um, I don't know was it in the last 20 minutes or certainly towards the end of the game and I know you'd spoken a lot about that afterwards that you knew if you were still in the mix at that point that you could you know hold Leinster out and certainly looking at your defence at the weekend the number of times that you repelled from close in or even held up over the line was remarkable and obviously um, Leinster failed to do that at the end of the game last year what's the I, have you started to look at that I'm sure you had the pencil out when you were um, watching the game on Saturday um, not really, no. I was more in prep for Sunday, to be honest. You know, right. I think it would be a huge error because our season could be over Sunday dinner time. You know, if you keep your interest in the other semi final, you've already missed the jump. So uh, there will be things from that video that would be looked at. I haven't looked at it yet. Uh, maybe this afternoon might get a little bit of time. Otherwise, uh, you know, we've too long, we've Montpellier, then we've the, the final week um, to get a performance right um, for that. But Leinster are a better team than they were last year. I think we're a better team than we were last year. Next for a huge, compelling game. Um, but I suppose what's consistent in a lot of this is that, you know, I mean, Leinster are beating teams by 20 or 30 points, even though sometimes it feels like they're tight games. So mm. their last 16 hours, sorry, they're performance from 60 to 80 minutes I haven't looked at any of the data but uh, they finished games incredibly well so um, um, yeah it's for us to be able to um, have our plan Leinster will have their plan so it is what it is uh, it's going. It's going to be incredible. There's going to be fireworks. Last weekend was the basis of anything to go on. The uh, it's going to be an absolute belter. We've won in here from Greg London. Uh, he says, "Ronan, will you get onto some of the sports shops in Ireland to start looking at stocking La Rochelle jerseys uh, ahead of the final?" Mm-hmm. So th- I think that's an indication that there will be people that'll be there decked out in yellow and red. That may not be from. I know your catchment area is growing around La Rochelle. Maybe not quite as wide as uh, as you would expect it, but there'll be plenty of Irish fans. I'm there. Sure, uh, I'm sure there to jury on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I sure will. Yeah, we're looking. We'll get into it a bit, uh, that game, a bit more specifics, maybe close to the time. Thanks, William, and congrats again. Cheers. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Thanks, Adrian. Cheers. Bye bye. Ronan Gar on the line there from uh, La Rochelle. It's just an incredible feat. Like, 
an incredible success story. <sighs> Watching the game, I watched the game in full on Wednesday night, and they are frightening. Yeah, they're, ter- they're terrifying to watch. Oh, um, quality of a lot of the it, it, there's so much reminiscent about the um, All Blacks about them with yeah. the quality of the stuff they do, the basic stuff they do, but making the ball stick. The basic skills, the heads up rugby. I'm sure, like that's what we were trying to get at there as a part of the game plan, or are you playing what's in front of you. But, geez, it's frightening. Like, there's somebody I was on to <coughs> a couple of Munster friends last night, and they were like, "No, nah, no, nah, you know, Leinster will have this sewn up in the final. Don't worry about that." And not at all. Like, it's it is not going to be a surprise in the slightest. Yeah. If La Rochelle win this final, are you conflicted as a as a Leinster fan who chats to Ronan all the time? Conf- no, not in, not in the slightest. No shame. confliction. See, I'm 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 back in Ronan in this one. I'm, yeah. I'm 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 the same. I'm looking for my La, my La Rochelle jersey ahead of the final. You're putting your Ulster jersey to one side for, for a minute. Terrible look. There's a lot of Irish lads in that the Leinster team, and I wish them well. And, and I don't really care. It's who desperate wins the to be honest with you. Yeah, like I think. You're actively, if it was anybody else but uh, La Rochelle, who would you no, be for? Oh yeah, I'd be, I'd be for Leinster. Right. I think La Rochelle is the only, there's a lot of Irish people from outside Leinster that maybe have a little soft spot for, for La Rochelle now, especially people in Munster, I suppose. Uh, it's popular to dislike Leinster. You're not wrong there, yeah. And yeah. it's just an arsehole of a trait. But just because it's popular doesn't mean it's wrong. How is it an arsehole of a trait to dislike it's Leinster? Just, it's I'm like not from Leinster. It's snobbery, like... No, I'm, fr- I'm from Monaghan. Anti-Leinster, Monaghan. like, I know, but th- that makes it even worse. Like, Why? Sure, what if you, you you work and live in Dublin? So? There's a good chance I don't you support will Dublin spend and the rest of your days... I don't in, support Dublin GA or... But you're nobody's... And neither do I. Nobody's asking you to. Yeah, right, well, <laughs> how does geography come into it then? Because from you're, li- you're living in Leinster. You you actually, we've established before, I So living in Leinster means said, I should support Leinster. I jokingly, so, so said it is geography. You, jokingly said to you about Ulster, you would actually don't have a province. So you're a floating voter. Well, no, you I... Just jump on board. I do have a province. I'm from Ulster. But my dad... Don't, you've never been da- to Ravenhill. Like, your Ulster is not your yeah, province. Yeah, but my dad's... Uh, I, I'd support Connacht more so, because dad's from Galway. I know, but like, if my auntie had whatever, she'd be well, yeah, from I've, Ulster. I just but identify more I'm just that. saying, like... Jump on board, Shane. I, I don't know, be a there's hater. A, there's a lot of people in the comments, I'm sure, that would back me up that that they're Irish be, but not Leinster hater. fan. Who cares if it's if it's popular to not support Leinster? It is. It's like it's just such an arsehole of a trade. <sighs> it's not an yeah, I'm not saying you're an arsehole. You're a lovely, of course, lovely yeah, person, yeah, yeah, a great yeah, colleague. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Respect that. Respect <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> respect. Respect. <laughs> Put respect on the name, Shane. Twenty past eight. Column is jumping out of his skin to get us moving here.